Hello, this is Pretty Guardian, and today I am here to talk to you about the game New World. So it has been about a year since I last reviewed this game on my channel in my video New World a Possibility Unfulfilled, and in that review I gave the game a mostly negative review. And at that time I was really mad because when the game first came out, I just thought it had so much promise. I thought that the world was beautiful and the lore was deep and interesting and there was just so much fun that could be had in Eternum. I was very excited for the game and it let me down. There were a lot of really big game-breaking bugs, particularly in the beginning. Stuff that ruined the trading post, which in an economy that is almost entirely player-driven, that was absolutely huge to me. Amazon was actually taking the trading post down multiple times, and it seemed that in most of the updates, there were new bugs that were being introduced, and the game was just a mess. And so then when I did my review, it was right after their March update where they introduced Heart of Madness, which is kind of an end game expedition where you take a five man party into Shattered Mountain and you get to beat the boss of kind of the base game. She is a conquistador named Isabella. That whole expedition, while amazing, was really disappointing to me in the sense that it had taken them so long just to give us any sort of conclusion to the base game. I felt like everything that had happened up until that point should have been included in the base game. They absolutely should not have launched as early as they did. Now, here we are a year later, and I have spent over 500 hours playing this game, and I want to revise some of my review. While the things that I said were pretty much true back then, I will say that the game has grown on me significantly, and it's finally in a stage where today I would recommend it. So to talk about some of the things that have changed, first off, they have gone back and they have revised some of the earlier content. So for example, the city of Monarch's Bluffs. In the lore of their world, this was a city that's like ruled by the kings and nobility. And to better reflect that, they've created a more Camelot sort of castle around the city and a more Arthurian storyline that runs through that zone. So they've actually done this to a few of the starting zones. They've re revamped the cities and then created new stories within those areas for us. They have also released an entirely new zone in their Brimstone Sands update. This is a desert-based zone that combines a lot of Egyptian mythology with a lot of Roman and Greek influences. And so I felt like that was a really interesting and inspired zone. They also started introducing some animated cutscenes that give a little more life to the story, and some of the world building that happens within that zone has broader implications for the rest of Eternum. So overall, it was just a really well done area. They've also had a pretty regular cadence of event updates. So around Thanksgiving time, they had this really goofy one called Turculon, where everybody was going to do these big group boss battles against a giant turkey, which I think is kind of like revenge of all the little turkeys that we've run around and killed in Eternum. And then around Christmas time, they have the Winter Convergence event, where you go on a series of quests and battle these Yeti-like monsters. Keeping in the theme of Brimstone Sands, they just had another one where you battle some legionnaires and monsters from that zone and that sort of Roman theme. They also added a new trade skill where you can become a musician. There are different instruments that you can play, and during the course of your adventures, you discover sheets of music. And so it manifests itself in a little rhythm game that is very similar to like Dance Dance Revolution or any of those where you kind of have to tap the keys to the beat. It also has different skill levels, so you can play as like a novice, skilled, or higher tiers where you can get more experience and you actually get buffs for performing. And so 
A lot of people in towns are gathering around playing their instruments. You can also coordinate with other players. So like you can be playing the flute while somebody else is playing the guitar and actually playing the same songs together. It's a really cute system. It's a lot of fun. And I think it has helped to add a little bit of life to the towns because people are actually standing around playing their music so that like other people can get buffs and that sort of thing and share those buffs with each other. At this stage of the game, for me, I've completed most of the mainline content, including the Heart of Madness expedition, defeating Isabella. That whole expedition is beautifully done. There are a lot of like different mechanics that you have to engage in. For example, there's a portion where somebody has to like bring the shield along a pathway while we're battling this giant like mech robot thing and then somebody has to like jump on these turrets to fire at it and it's just a lot of fun. The challenge level for this expedition was very high. I failed with about three different groups before finally succeeding on the fourth one and in between each of those I was going back out into the world and trying to upgrade my gear and improving my skill and trying to think critically about the things that would bring me success during that expedition. For example, packing along some corruption potions and getting some gear gems that would help protect me from fire damage because that's what Isabella was using. That expedition really is an excellent way to cap off the base game experience in New World. Now I'm going back and doing a lot of the side content. There is so much content in this game. We have main story quests, side quests, faction quests, which is another thing that they've updated. So each faction now has their own little home base that is unique for each of those factions, along with a quest line and kind of a refined system and importance for declaring your faction. So they've done a lot of changes and improvements with that whole system. We also have town quests, which are good for building your reputation in the towns. And with that reputation, you can unlock different rewards, like improving your gathering speed in that zone or if you're into housing it can help you get discounts on housing and trading and different skill and economy based buffs. So I went back down to Cutlass Keys, cleaned some things up there, went over to Reek Water, cleaned some things up there. I do think that the game on the whole could give you a better pathway of traversing some of these zones as far as like connecting the storylines of them a little bit better. For example, there was no real reason for me to go down to Cutlass Keys other than that I saw these quest markers on my map and I wanted to clear them off. And it's a little bit of a bummer that they've streamlined the pathway from level 1 to level 60 so much because there is a lot of the mid zones are still really worth exploring especially for me, Cutlass Keys, because even though my character level and my gear score and everything has been progressing so much, a lot of my crafting skills and gathering skills had fallen behind. And so going to a place like Cutlass Keys, where they have some more of those mid-tier gathering nodes for like mining and stuff was actually really beneficial for me. And the final thing that I wanted to talk about in this video, and it's kind of the big reason that I'm even making it in the first place, as of March 28th, 2023, New World has instituted a new season pass. It's a system where every quarter they'll be releasing new content. For example, one of the big focuses for this first one is the new expedition Empyrean Forge that can be found in Great Cleave and takes your party on a five-man adventure fighting some Varangian and Angry Earth enemies. So every three months, they'll be releasing new quest lines, storylines, updates, expeditions, just different content that players can work on during the course of the upcoming several months. And you get a card where you can earn stamps for different activities that you perform within the game and earn rewards. They do have some premium rewards, which are cosmetic items, and then they also have general rewards like umbral shards, gypsum, and cosmetics that you can earn from the regular pass as well. So I think that this is a really awesome addition to the game because it gives players who want to pay more money an avenue to do that and to get more rewards but it also just introduces a ton of free content into the game and you can also count on more content being added to it regularly. So for that reason, just seeing the dedication that the team has put into this game, for me, it is now a game that I would recommend. I think New World is a lot of fun. It's beautiful. It's dangerous. The combat actually requires 
skill to it. And I'm really excited to see what this game holds in the future. Thank you so much for watching along today. If you want to throw your girl a subscribe, I would really appreciate that as I'm trying to grow this channel and bring more gaming and nerd culture related content to you. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, this is Pretty Guardian, logging out.